First-person shooters have evolved a lot over the years. We've gone from fast-paced 90 shooters like the original Doom and then to 3D with games like the original Quake. We saw a bunch of modern military spunk gargle wee wee games of the late 2000s. In modern times, we have a ton of battle royales and hero shooters. Hell, over the last decade, we've seen an explosion of those same retro 90 shooters now under the title of boomer shooters. But there's one era of first-person shooters that have basically died off. That's the Half-Life era. But thankfully, the nostalgia cycle has come around and we're starting to see more of those style of games. These games are largely inspired by Half-Life. So I've started calling them Half-Likes. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. A few modern Half-Likes that I'm sure my viewers would want to play. Hey, Jarek the Gaming Dragon here, and I love Half-Life. If you watch this channel for any amount of time, then you already know this. The Half-Life era is easily my favorite era in gaming. Half-Life quite literally changed first-person shooters forever, overnight. I was working on a first-person shooter when uh, Half-Life came out. Our demo was coming out like in a week, and then it was announced the Half-Life demo was going to come out. You know, everybody played, and it was like this quiet, discomfort that sort of spread throughout the entire studio. The demo came out, the game came out, and it just thudded. It was an echo of nothing. Nobody cared because the entire industry fundamentally shifted with the release of that demo. Everybody in the, the, the gamer side and the creator side all had their brains collectively flipped. It was the they live moment where Rowdy Rowdy Piper's putting the glasses on and seeing the signs, right? That is truly how I felt going Oh, this is how games can be. That is from Noclip's Half-Life documentary. I cannot recommend that video enough. It is a really, really good video. Highly encourage you to watch it. I put a link down below in the video information and also link in the top right. I've seen some people argue that the original Half-Life is a boomer shooter, but I vehemently disagree. I think if you make anyone play the original Quake and then play the original Half-Life one after another, no matter how much they play video games, they'll instantly be able to tell the difference. Hell, have them play Quake 4 right after and you'll be able to see that even Quake was inspired by Half-Life. It's not an exaggeration to say that Half-Life killed boomer shooters for a while. I still know some people that are a little bitter about this, but Half-Life was such a good game that they can't really be that mad about it. So what did Half-Life do so differently? Well, that could be a video in its own right, so I'll try to keep this short. 90 shooters were fast-paced and action-oriented. Half-Life intentionally slowed things down. Half-Life was all about a believable world and atmospheric storytelling. The game didn't pull you out of the moment to force you to look a certain direction in a cutscene. The developer didn't want to be playing the game, they wanted the player to play the game. So while there was scripted events, they felt natural. The world was existing around you instead of existing because of you. The too long didn't read is that there was a heavy focus on story, which shooters didn't usually do. The second big thing was the pacing. Well, yes, the memes about Gordon Freeman bunny hopping across the map are hilarious. The general movement is slower in Half-Life than shooters before it. Keep in mind, the average player isn't going to be a speedrunner and isn't going to know the quirks of the Quake engine. Half-Life was definitely not made with that in mind. The general pacing Valve goes for with Half-Life games is 15 to 20 minutes of combat, with five to 10 minutes of downtime. This gives the player ample time to really explore your environment instead of constantly being forced to fight enemies nonstop, which can definitely burn you out. But that leads me to the third thing. Valve believes heavily in player expression. If enough players think something is the solution to a puzzle that wasn't intended to be the solution, then Valve will make it the solution anyway. Hell, this works down to even very basic mechanics. For example, when it comes to Half-Life 2, the first few playthroughs I had, I didn't even know that pressing E on these ammo crates would open them, because just hitting them with a crowbar opens them. The crowbar was your solution to everything in Half-Life 1, so naturally enough players wanted to do this to make Valve actually have that work. So here's the three things that made Half-Life so different for its time. Atmospheric world building with immersive storytelling, a very particular rhythm to its combat rest pacing, and the illusion of complete player freedom. Even if the world is scripted, it never feels like the developer is forcing you to do something. It always feels like you are in control. Which is why Call of Duty campaigns always have been and always will be bad, don't at me. With that all explained, let's talk about these half-likes. I only have one rule, and that rule is that I am not going to cover Half-Life mods, because that's just too obvious. If you want more Half-Life, you've probably already played them. I'm not ruling out mods entirely, just not more literal Half-Life because that is just more Half-Life. And none of these games are in order, they're all great games that you should play. I guess we'll start with what is probably the big one, 
Industria. Industria is a good place to start because this is the only game I'm talking about today that you can play on consoles. This game initially released on PC, but later released to the PlayStation and Xbox. So if your first genre are shooters and you play on console for some reason, then you can play this game. Industria is also the most obvious half-like out of this entire list. It wears its inspiration on its sleeve and I adore it for that. One of the common things you'll see with half-likes is that they're firmly based in science fiction. While the world is grounded, everything makes you ask questions. In this case, where am I? What is this empty, abandoned city? Why are there robots roaming everywhere? Making you ask questions like this, getting you genuinely intrigued, is a very good quality out of a game. The combat itself is not really what's keeping you engaged with this game. It isn't bad, but I found it a little too easy. Regardless, I had a ton of fun exploring the city, and one of the reasons is because this game looks so darn good. I have no idea how a team of only five or six people managed to do this, but if you want more Half-Life, this is absolutely a great place to start. The next game is Adaka. This game started as a blatant mix between Half-Life and Halo before evolving into its own thing. Hell, at one point one of the characters says, don't go into the tunnels, and yep, this is just Ravenholm. With that said, it didn't feel like a poor Half-Life clone, it felt like its own unique experience. And as development continued, I saw less and less Halo, and more and more inspiration from other games like Stalker. Granted, the Stalker portion materialized as its own mode outside of the campaign, but I did feel like mentioning it because if you love Stalker, there is a lot here for you. But the main campaign is very much so Half-Life. With this game only costing $25 and having a mode resulting in getting 10 to 20 to 30 hours out of it, it is a steal. The next game? is Doom 3 Phobos. Yeah, so this is the one mod I have on this list. This is genuinely one of the best mods I have ever played, and it confuses me because nobody talks about it. I'm serious, if you look on YouTube, you might see the occasional playthrough from a small YouTube channel that will get like 100 views, but no other content creators have made videos of this mod and I don't know why. This mod is of absurdly high quality, and it really deserves more attention. And it blatantly advertises itself as being one of those early 2000s games. One of those games that I guess nowadays can be considered the second generation of retro shooters. It has that immersive world. It has that combat, relax, combat, relax pacing. And for those people that think that the Doom 3 shotgun sucks, you're wrong, by the way. They entirely changed up their maps and rebalanced the shotgun to give it more range. In fact, they just rebalanced all the weapons in Doom 3, so while most of them use the same model, they don't at all feel the same. Jesus Christ. I could not recommend this mod enough, and to all the other content creators on YouTube, please make videos of this mod. It really deserves more attention. Before I talk about the last half likes, I want to give an honorable mention to a subgenre that's adjacent to Half-Likes. That's the Woo Shooter. Woo Shooters are games that are inspired by the original Fear, because Fear was inspired by John Woo movies. Fear is a really interesting case because it's almost a blend of Boomer Shooters and Half-Life style games, yet it feels unique from anything else around it. But the main thing that's been emphasized in new Woo Shooters is the combat. The best way it can be described is gun Fu with tons of particle effects. This could be its own video on its own, but I did really want to mention them because if you like Half-Life style games, you probably also like these. The first one I want to mention is the only one that's actually out right now. This is Severed Steel. This takes the combat of Fear, adds a ton of movement to it, and dials it up to 11. It's definitely inspired by Fear, and I still think it's firmly a Woo Shooter, but we're getting into weird territories where this is kind of close to a Boomer Shooter 2 in gameplay. Regardless, if you liked Fierce Combat, you're probably also going to enjoy this game. It is a lot of fun. The other two I'm going to mention are much more similar to that of the original Fear overall. The first one is Trepang, which is almost just Fierce Combat, but modern. There is so much gore in this game, I love it. And the last Woo Shooter is Sulaco. I am looking forward to this game above almost everything else right now. I actually had access to a demo that I couldn't talk about, for a long time and it was torture. I just wanted to rant about this game. It is so good. This follows the early 2000s formula a little more faithfully. This is a linear game with a fleshed out world, with a fleshed out story, and fears over the top combat. And somehow this is built on GZ Doom. No idea how they managed to do this with that engine, but they did. Now both Sulaco and Trepang are not released yet, but it's very worth following these projects. And for the last Half-Like, I might lose quite a bit of you, these are numerous VR games. Anytime I mention VR or any VR video I make, 
it tends to get a lot less views, which makes me really disappointed. I think people have the logic of, well, I'm not gonna play VR, I don't have access to VR, so I don't care, and then they click away. But stick with me, because VR has been some of the most fun I have had in gaming since that mid-2000s time where every game was fresh and new and revolutionary. And just as a platform, VR caters exactly to that Half-Life style of game. And this is totally coincidental. If you try to take control away from a player in VR, it genuinely feels nauseating. Something as simple as cutscenes are really hard to figure out. As a result, everything needs to be in the player's control. But at the same time, VR is also more taxing on your computer, so you can't really make things as big as you would want to you naturally are going to have to make linear scripted games. I know there are exceptions to this, like say Into the Radius, which is literally just Stalker in VR. I haven't made a video of it yet. I do want to eventually. It's really, really good. But for the most part, it is a lot easier to make a Half-Life style game in VR, especially since one of the big things about this style of game is immersing you in that world. And what is more immersive than almost literally being in that world. I mean, hell, Valve saw this in VR and made Half-Life Alex. Now, I could mention a ton of VR games here, but I think I'll stick to what I think are the two best ones. Vertigo is almost blatantly Half-Life in VR. In Vertigo Remastered, you're in a mysterious underground facility with mysterious figures and mysterious aliens. Does this sound familiar? Yeah, this was basically Half-Life. In fact, the best way I can describe this game is the story of Half-Life meets the tone of Portal. Hell, there's even something that seems like almost an alternative Portal gun. Yet, it's not just a Half-Life clone. This feels like its own thing in its own world. It unfortunately doesn't get enough attention, probably just because of the graphics, which make me disappointed. It's definitely stylized instead of trying to be realistic graphically, but I don't see that as a problem. They're also currently working on Vertigo 2. I don't know when this will release, but now is the best time to play the original game. It absolutely stands up and is one of the best experiences experiences I've had in VR. But it's not the best experience, because the best experience is easily Boneworks. Yeah, you knew this one was coming. Boneworks is such a good game that I hold it up there with my top three favorite video games of all time. It's right up there with the original Half-Life and the original Fear. To me, this game is the defining VR title. Its direct presentation of the story is a little bit lacking, I'll be honest. However, its atmospheric world building is fantastic. The story is definitely there, you just have to look for it. And if you're in VR, you are unintentionally looking for it. But the best thing about Boneworks is that the developer, Stress Level Zero, they really embodied the Valve idea of full player expression. Unlike Half-Life Alex, where you're a floating camera with hands, in Boneworks you're a full body with full collision, and while yes, this can be a little bit janky at times, this means you have so many opportunities to do whatever you want. You can turn anything into a melee weapon. You have full proper two-handed weapons. You can climb absolutely anything. No matter how much you tell your brain, you're standing on the floor, in your room, completely safe, it really does feel like you're about to fall to your death. This could either be traumatizing or really good exposure therapy if you're afraid of heights. My main point here is that this is an experience you can't get anywhere else. This, to me, really feels like the evolution of Half-Life style games. And Valve saw that too. They saw that when they made Half-Life Alex, but they didn't go all out. They played it really safe. Now, yes, Bone Lab does exist, but I'm actually pretty disappointed with its campaign. The full package is great, and I can't wait to see what mods come out of it, but if you're just looking for a solid campaign, I would recommend you stick to Boneworks. And hey, there you go, there are some Half-Likes to play. I really, really hope the nostalgia cycle kicks in because I'm seeing a lot of people wanting more Half-Life style games. I like Boomer Shooters, don't get me wrong, but we have a lot of them and we don't have many Half-Life games anymore. If I had to make the hard choice of just deleting one of these genres, I would get rid of Boomer Shooters and just fully embrace Half-Likes. I really miss this era in gaming. It is easily my favorite, but that about sums up this video. A little different than what I usually make, so I hope you enjoyed it. Want to give a big thanks to everyone that subscribes to me over on Twitch. If you subscribe to my Twitch, you get to see my videos at least one week ahead of time. And even if you don't, that's cool. I understand. It's still fun hanging out over here. Huge thanks goes to everyone that watched this video. 